everybody. Max here with Traders in the Zone, back with another Average People of Cryptocurrency. And today I'm joined by Greg. So Greg, go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. My name is Greg Bouchard, Chainwave.io. So my functional role right now is Business Development Manager for Chainwave. A um, little background about myself. I grew up in Indiana, went to Indiana University, Kelly School of Business, best business school in the country outside of Wharton maybe. Um, was hired out of school to trade futures and derivatives proprietarily, which was a uh, dinosaur job at the time at 22. Um, basically, you know the guys in the pits yelling at each other. I was doing that electronically on screen. So we were in a dying profession, but I was good at it. Um, I was a scalper, um, a high volume trader, uh, a seat holder on the CME the Chicago Mercantile Exchange from 2007, 2015. Um, had a lot of success doing mostly equity index arbitrage, uh, trading a lot of hards and softs, uh, along with FX, pr primarily Japanese yen. Was mostly a global macro trader. And in that sense, I mean, um, kind of looking at central bank philosophy overall and deciding how the punch bowl money is gonna flow and diversify my trades that way. Um, when I say scalper, I mean high volume, like four and a half million futures contracts, derivatives, options on futures, etc. cetera. So um, very well versed in that industry. Uh, Mark Papadopoulos can talk about that. But um, like I said, I was a dinosaur at 22, meaning that the platform that, or not the platform, but the execution strategy that we had was something of the past. So I was great at it in terms of speed. I traded a lot of volume, four and a half million futures, notional value of 1.5 trillion in my 20s, um, all under my own name, while giving other people like Mark money. Um, got a little cocky towards 29, 30. Uh, I decided to set up my own operation and move to Hermosa Beach, California. Uh, possibly one of the worst decisions I ever made. Um, who knows from what I learned from it, cry proudly. But um, I was great at uh, scalping an ARB, uh, reading tape, central bank philosophy, things like that. Basically a global macro approach to trading, uh, which has been thrown out the window through the recent central bank, I don't know, I guess, cl collaboration, <laughs> I guess we could say. Um, so I moved to Hermosa Beach, 2010, set up my own operation. That's when the retail trading died. Uh, that happened along with Man Financial going down. And which, what year was that? That would have been 2010. 2010. Uh, started trading in 2006, 2011, sorry. 2006, 2011, went on my own, thought I had enough capital. Um, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. But um, in hindsight, I lost a competitive edge um, because retail went down, it became all algo, and I also wasn't around the great minds that I was before. Uh, very competitive atmosphere, uh, very inspiring. I uh, learned a lot that I still think about to this day, through that period. Uh, so up to 2015, kept fighting the good fight, mm -hmm. um, trading nonstop, often to my own detriment. Maybe I like playing the game more than winning it at that point, but um, lessons learned. Um, 2016, I became a commercial real estate broker in Los Angeles which I was good at. Um, I didn't particularly like it. Uh, main reasons being, any of you that know about this, uh, it's a pretty scummy environment in Los Angeles within the commercial real estate market. Well, they have TV shows about it and it's all these <laughs> high net worth individuals, big egos, I mean, that makes sense. Big egos and liars. Oh, yeah, okay. I don't like liars. So, <laughs> yeah, so I, I did that, I was good at it, could make my worth, um, joined a, uh, a uh, financial group I won't name, uh, managing two and a half billion uh, in 2019. Uh, I found that job to be very easy. Uh, it was my first foray into the corporate atmosphere, which did not fit my personality, uh, to say the least. Um, so I've always been friends with Ben Brown, uh, the founder of Chainwave, where I currently work. I'm the business development manager. Um, he basically got me on a plane got me down here, and we've been rocking since 
18 months ago, uh, a little backstory in Chainwave, uh, developed four years ago, software engineering firm, mm -hmm. uh, basically fired all of our traditional web clients and went pure blockchain uh, about 18 months ago. I've had a lot of success building MVPs, minimum, minimum viable products, minimum viable prototypes, I don't know. Yep. call it whatever you want. But um, San Juan's been the best move I've ever made. And I've met people like Max, met people like Marina, and it's been great. And did you hear about cryptocurrency first when you were in California, still working in finance, or did Ben, was Ben the one who introduced you to it? I first heard about crypto in late 2010, and this still kicks my ass, but Ben was mining Bitcoin out of his apartment in 2011. Um, I remember a story. We were in the, <laughs> the back seat of a cab. Um, he sent me a couple of Bitcoin. I don't know what the price was. Um, four or five. A couple dollars. Yeah. yeah. He's like, yeah, hey, 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 check this out. And I was, those are forgotten now, by the way. They're sitting somewhere. We don't know. Uh, but my primary use originally, um, I was so involved in traditional markets that I didn't really understand the scope of what blockchain could accomplish, particularly because I, I viewed Bitcoin as in a store of value more than anything. So the real, real reason I started buying Bitcoin back in 12, 13 was to access, you know, Dream Market or Silk Road or things like that to buy goods, <laughs> goods. Uh, <laughs> But I learned a lot uh, in 2018, I would say, kind of during the ICO craze, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and that's when I think Ben thought originally about pivoting to purely blockchain related stuff, but it wasn't the right time for what we're trying to do because we're builders. We're not um, taking equity. We're not, that's tenement to being a seed investor, right? So it just wasn't the right time. Uh, things work out for a reason. I mean, especially with the Bitcoin and crypto crash back in 2018, you guys dodged a big bullet right there. Well, that's when I got, that's when I got heavily involved outside of, um, you know, just using it as a transactory thing. I, I bought, well, my first purchases were Decentraland, Iota Factum, uh, DLTX, David Johnson created Factum, one of our clients right now. Um, so yeah, I got into it there and then, I saw my investments decline. Always have been an Ethereum investor, always will be. Uh, that's gonna be a perpetual. Is that like Bitcoin first, Ethereum second? Or are you a Ethereum nah, first? Nah. Well, you know, what do I know, right? But yeah. at the end of the day, I think Bitcoin is the first calculator made, mm -hmm. which is amazing. It revolutionized everything. Like it, it, it's, the first cryptocurrency that was unbreakable, it's a calculator. Whereas I view Ethereum as Apple. It's um, something that builds a foundation that the network effect can mm -hmm. be built on top of, right? So we're talking about Apple versus a calculator. When we talk about Bitcoin versus Ethereum in my mind. Okay. And is that mainly just due to the people involved with Ethereum, how it stood up to the test of time? Or is that because you think institutional investors are in Ethereum and since they kind of pull the strings, they're not going to let it go away. I don't think institutional investors really know the difference. I okay. think institutional investors just hear Bitcoin and then I get in, right? But there's a reason why like sushi swap, pancake swap, these things are named that. It's mm -hmm. because you can't walk into a room of old white men, old <laughs> board members, and pitch these things. And I think that originally that was kind of the concept of like, we don't want to let traditional finance into this realm. So I think that, you know, what these guys are told is what they do. Uh, at the end of the day, though, I'm a believer in EVM compatible. Uh, Bitcoin is a store of value. I think it's, it's worth something. It always will be. So digital gold in your mind. Yes. Yeah. Layer one money. Yeah. Shakespeare over here. <laughs> and I mean, just moving from uh, selling real estate and then obviously getting the offer from Ben, is that the main reason why you wanted to jump full time into cryptocurrency, or is it mainly because of the sales side aspect, and that's just how you've been growing up? No, and, and and to back up a little bit, I never really did sales until real estate. I've always been a people person. I like talking to people. I enjoy you know, making people laugh, whatever. Yeah. Blah blah. But I think that for me personally, the writing was on the wall. Um, you know, blockchain solutions can solve real world problems in a way that pencil, you know, paper pushers can, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm talking everything from creating DAOs to improve poverty for some genius girl in Africa to be banked versus unbanked mm -hmm. versus real estate fractionalization, 
you know, I can go through our, all of our projects. I don't yeah. want this to be a huge chain wave <laughs> push, but it might be. But um, to me, I mean, the aspects, even in PDE gaming for charitable causes, I mean, to creating DAOs, to creating um, customs management, I think it's going to have a lot of backlash through the government because it's going to eliminate a lot of jobs. Then so it's Republicans make... should be happy with it. Right? Smaller <laughs> government. Libertarians. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it sounds like you're both into blockchain and NFTs then based on that answer. Yeah, so what, let me give you a little background on Chainwave. So we specialize, our main product is building NFT marketplaces. But we're chain agnostic, we can build anything. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of, we have A players on our team, A player engineers. They can learn any language quickly. Um, it might cost more, but kind of our proposition is that we usher blockchain entrepreneurs into the space, right? So one thing we don't do a lot of is strategy consultation and tokenomics. I think we're gonna talk about that later, but if people have niche, scope, industry, and capital, and they're willing to understand how to work with us, we can build anything. Yeah, because it seems like a unique challenge is these people have an idea and they don't know how to build it. Right, right. So a lot of times people, I mean, I, I handle all first calls, right? Mm-hmm. I'm a business development manager for Chainwave. So a lot of times that first call has very nebulous, grandiose ideas involved that are going to change the world, and they might, and I hope they do for the better. But without that particular niche or scope to originate with, you're not going to go anywhere. Um, we specialize in building a foundation that can be built on top of by an internal tech team, um, another consultant tech team. Uh, but to be honest, out of the 14 projects we've built, 12 of them have come back for version twos or version threes, whatever you want to call them. So those enterprise grade solutions uh, get a little trickier, but it's totally within our scope. But I agree with you that a lot of times people have these, these great ideas where, wow, mm-hmm. that changed the world, right? Yeah. Awesome kick ass but how are we going to do it where are we going to start you can't start with the world you got to start with a particular industry particular niche uh it's very important and have you guys noticed an uptick in at least inquiries to your guys' business since the bull coin 100 percent. i don't want to throw out numbers but i mean we got going 18 months ago we've grown from 5 to 16 um it's been a lot of learning for us. I mean, a lot of these ideas are novel, not trivial. And a lot of the solutions are creative and difficult. So it's not, hey, plug and play, uh, which a lot of people like use the words simple and easy, which <laughs> do not apply to blockchain. They don't apply. Cryptocurrency in general. Yeah. Right? So the, one of the biggest problems, or not problems, hurdles, I would say, uh, with ushering people into the space is A, I'll come back to this, do your own research. B, how well do you have it scoped? And C, do you have a tech internal lead? Because we can build the most amazing product for you, but when we hand it off, whether it's V2 or V3, the, the management of that product, mm-hmm. it, you're going to have to have somebody on board, right? Yeah. That understands exactly your thesis. Not that we don't, but we can't hold your hand all day, right? We're, we're building a product, right? I mean, you will for money, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and because, I mean, are there any specific coins or tech projects that you want to tell people about or you're just very passionate about? You've mentioned Ethereum. All the projects that we've built. <laughs> yeah, so there's some very cool stuff. So NAMI is an L2 protocol out of Norway that is basically EVM, scaling, optimization, uh, we're building 24 projects for them over the next three years. We have a partnership with them. Jacobo, Tomasaya. Here you go, bud. Um, NAMI's very cool. Uh, we're actually having current customers branch out with them or combine with them to work with them, which is pretty cool to see that collaboration. But Walfi is a token we recently uh, developed and released, which is basically an Etherscan type mechanism for rug pulls. Uh, for lack of you know more terminology uh, but you can see when the sharks or the big whales are dunking dumping dunking whatever you want to call it 
Um, another good one that I like to talk about is the Black Box Collective, which is basically private membership, uh, private jet membership through NFTs. Also, uh, we have built basically a decentralized TikTok for a group that I can't name right now. Uh, just, just due to NDAs. There's NDAs, 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 right? Um, but obviously I pump those projects. There's always going to be, um, you know, Ave and Sushi Swap and all that stuff. I'll promote that. Um, but I, 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 yeah, I'm not here to give investment advice. No, no. All investment opinion. But if you but personally, to 2018, Decentraland, mm-hmm. back to Myota. Ethereum is my main guy always. Um, so I'm invested in those still, but personally, uh, I'm very Ethereum heavy. Ethereum heavy and its subsequent projects as well. Anything based on the Ethereum blockchain, you're, that's going to pique your interest. Yeah. Ethereum 2.0 is what we're waiting for, right? All right. What coin in the top 10 right now do you hate the most? <laughs> it, it, like any popular coin, which one can you just not stand when someone starts bringing it up? You know what? It's a complicated question. I don't want to shut anything, but I really believe that Ethereum is so much more powerful than Bitcoin. Um, I think Bitcoin is, you know, the big the big dog in the room. It's a store of value. Like I said, it's a calculator. Whereas Ethereum is an Apple store that can be built upon with network effect. Network effect meaning boundless. I mean, mm-hmm. you know all about liquidity providing all that stuff, but. I, I, I would say <laughs> I should talk Bitcoin, I guess. Uh, yeah, I do. Okay. I mean, You're, there's a lot of Bitcoin maxis out there, so you may ruffle a few feathers. Yeah, that's okay. I, I'm used to ruffling feathers. Hey, opinions are like assholes. Everyone yeah. has one. So, I, I believe Bitcoin's around to stay, and it's going to increase in value. But I think Ethereum will see a tenfold increase versus it over the next five years. So then with that comparison to digital gold, would you rather hold Bitcoin or physical gold? Because I know this question is so complicated for me, my friend. I'm pretty agnostic as to chain, to be honest with you. You can build on Ethereum, you can't build on Bitcoin, right? So I I like the chains you can build on. But if we're going to get down to that conversation, now we're going to get into it. Uh oh. Now we're going to get into it. So in this environment, um, ETH is a strong hand, in my opinion. Ethereum is a strong hand. Um, Like I said, I already mentioned the analogies, but. Stocks are in a, a very strange place right now. Um, they're still heavily overvalued, in my opinion, even with the recent 20 to 30 percent decline. Um, and this is due to the belligerence of central banks. Uh, there was a decision made, roughly in 2011, uh, for all the central banks to collude. To print money is a bad word because it's not accurate. There's any money printed, but they typed in a couple zeros. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Something like that. But once everybody's in the same bucket, you know, Europe, United States, even China, um, and they're all fudging their numbers. We know this. Uh, I mean, I'm a, one of my skills is I'm an experienced tape reader. Eh? I'm experienced at central bank philosophy. Um, I understand what's happening. There's no way out of this game. So in my opinion, stagflation, inflation, where you know, it's a lot of words there, but um, it, it's inevitable. So, what do you want to hold? I think diversify. When you trade, when you say you want to hold stocks. Personally, if you can do the fundamental analysis on an individual stock, yeah, if you believe in it. But I believe in trading options on stocks both ways. So yeah. that's how I interpret that question. But um, obviously, gold and silver are always going to be a good hedge against inflation, as I mentioned. Um, if you really want to make money, go trade silver futures when they're when they're rocking. Cause they're that's the high stakes deal. Yeah. That's five grand a five grand a dollar, right? So oh. silver goes 28, 29, it's five grand. So hold yeah. ten contracts of that one. It's fluctuating three contracts a day or three dollars a day, right? I hope you took advantage of the silver storage squeeze last year. Uh, I lost seventy five grand in a minute. That uh-huh. was two thousand ten, by the way. No, there was another one. Oh, the last squeeze year. last year. Yeah, last well, I year. I bought the high at forty nine seventy seven. Oh uh, man, I'll never <laughs> get this. It was silver Sundays, what they call it. High at forty nine seventy seven. There's no uh, limit down in the silver's market. So it hit 42 on the open. So I had carried four contracts in personally, not through my uh, firm. And I was trading my own money too, right? So what, seven times five, 35? And so I've got 140 grand in two minutes, right? Mm-hmm. 
So, but that, that market is crazy. Um, options on it are even crazier. But I believe overall, to get back to your question, that, yeah, it makes sense to diversify yourself between the three. I believe in Ethereum as a whole. I believe you, three rules to, well, four rules, I guess, to the fundamental analysis of crypto, right? One, like, this is San Juan. This is, like, DeFi summer. Um, you know, go to the bar, find a pretty girl at the end of the bar, and go ask her what she's investing in. <laughs> no, do your own research, do your own research, do your own research. These are the three most important things I would tell anybody. Um, is that financial day, advice? Do your own research? Yeah, it is. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, cry proudly. You learn from your lessons. Uh, you know, wake up and be a better person. Um, I believe after years and years of spending my life trying to make money that the most important thing in life is relationships and being kind. So be like Brian Russell and save some dogs today. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, do your own research, treat people right, don't get involved in pump and dump schemes, um, do the right thing. Invest in what you believe in. Yeah, we're not all going to be overnight millionaires. Like, and those ones are generally either the stupidly lucky or the ones who start the scam in the first place. Right, exactly. Yeah, the pump and dump scheme, that's what Wolfie's looking at. Yeah, DeFi Kingdoms is a cool avenue to look at that can teach a lot of, I guess, newbies about, you know, DeFi, decentralized finance, liquidity providing, all that stuff. Uh, it's a game you can play to learn it. We actually built, uh, Chainwave built uh, the DeFi Heroes program on top of that. It's like NFT Heroes that can fight each other. It's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the, the potentials are endless here. Um, it's just about what you want to be involved in and what are your motives. And I think most people's motives when they think about this space are to make money, right? Mm -hmm. So if that's your motive, I would say have a long time horizon. Don't be knee-jerky with your decisions and invest in what you believe in after doing your own research. And only invest what you can lose. 100%. <laughs> well, any, any, uh, any shout-outs you want to give here at the end or... Any other sage advice? Because I know you've probably been doing this a lot longer and people are getting into cryptocurrency or just looking at it like, oh, maybe I can just park my money in here. And if they had parked it, you know, money in Bitcoin or Ethereum back in November, they're down over 30% or 50%. It's, it's, fortunately, it's the winter during this interview here right now. Um, if you really believe in something, you got to hold it. I mean, you got to hold it for three to five years, in my opinion. You got to have that kind of horizon. Um, there's no... I don't look for get rich quick type activity um, personally, so I can't really give advice on that. But invest in projects that you believe in. Um, you know, there's, I, I think there's good in the world more than bad, and so invest in things that are trying to help people that you would want to be part of. Mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day that you can sleep easy knowing that, and um, who knows what's going to be the next ETH? Um, it's all speculation, but. Be prepared to lose your money, but also be prepared to make a lot of money. <laughs> well, Greg, thank you so much for stopping Max. by. And if you guys want to see any information that was mentioned here today, I will post the links in the description down below. If you want to get involved with Chainwave and try and build your dream, I will post a link to their website. I won't post your phone number, I promise. That's fine. Everybody uh, knows it already. <laughs> that is it. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions for Greg here specifically, leave them in the comments down below, and I'll make sure he can respond to those. And have a great rest of your day.